Well, as we continue to make headway on this two-seat buggy top, the next step is to put the webbing on the framework that kind of makes this top a little more solid, takes all the slop out of the joints. But even before we do that, I need to get these joints and the sockets painted because it's really difficult to paint afterwards. So I'm going to do that first.
Well, through the course of these videos, you've seen most of what I have here in the shop. I actually have two shops side by side. This side is 2,700 square feet, and you can see it's pretty full and really tough to navigate. I need to keep an alleyway so I can get to the front and back, and I try to do that, but I'm always juggling. Now this second side of the shop is 2,600 square feet and it's also pretty full of other stuff. So I don't have room to move this mower on that side, so I've got to do a little juggling to get this box back to the paint room. I want to get it painted so it can be curing while I am working on the upholstery on this top. So I do get asked frequently how I paint. And you notice I haven't shown a lot of that process. The process of painting and the skill of painting is very difficult to show. But there are a couple of things that I'd like to point out. I never paint with latex. I always paint with an oil-based paint. Oil-based will breathe, latex is a rubber, and when you completely enclose a piece of wood, like a wheel or a box, with rubber, latex paint, it will rot from the inside out because it cannot breathe. That is some of the worst damage that I see when it comes into the shop. People think latex works good on a house, it'll work good on a buggy. But that is not true. On a house, the back side of that wall can breathe. When you completely encase a piece of wood, it cannot breathe. The second thing is I do not finish sand when I am painting. The finest sandpaper I use is 80 grit. I want this wood to be rough. I want the primer to have a good surface to adhere to. And I also thin out most of my primers that first two coats, first and second coat, and I thin my primers down about 20% because on hardwood it needs to soak in and penetrate and it needs to grab that rough surface as good as possible. So oil-based paint and sand it rough. All the finish work will be in the sanding of the primer, not in the woodwork. The underneath sides I spray with one thin coat so as not to impede the moisture transference. I want this bottom side to breathe so it only gets one coat of both primer and then it'll get a light coat of color when I'm finished. Now the side panels, that's a whole different story. I prime in increments of three, three layers each, then I sand between each three coats. I can do this five or six times, it will allow me to have 15 to 18 different coats depending on the quality of finish that I want when I'm done. So anyway, this is where the bulk of the finish work is. So I like to prime and paint late in the afternoon and evening so it can set undisturbed overnight and kind of cure out. My paint room is heated with hot water so I have no air movement. 
And after it has set overnight, usually 12 to 15 hours, it is still soft, but it is dry enough and firm enough to handle gently. So I'm going to reassemble this to box and the seats so I can put the top frame back on and begin putting the webbing on this framework.
Well, this webbing will now keep all the slop and side play out of this top frame. So when I go to pull this top material and the headliner on this framework, all that loose jointedness is already out. So this will make a good solid foundation to upholster this top with. But anyway, thanks for following along and thanks for watching.